Hello, today is the 6th of November, the year of our Lord, 2014. Now, this sermon is about election and predestination. It seems, uh, somebody got angry at me the other day about this. So I figured I would check into it and study it, do some research. And this is where the Holy Spirit led me. So you can believe this, or you can believe uh, some of the man, but I'm going by the word of God only. Not my opinion, not my words. I'm breaking it down, what God says here. Make it easier for all of us to understand. <clears throat> okay, like I said, it's about election and predestination. <clears throat> and I'm losing my voice already. Now, even after all is said and done here, we have free will to decide for ourselves which or whom we may serve. We all have that choice. Nobody can make it for us. I'll try to keep this as short as I can. Okay, in this next verse, uh, it's Ephesians 1, 4. This is notice, I mean, notice that we should be holy, it says. Are we trying to be holy in Jesus? I know we are all sinners, but we have to choose always. We always have a choice to obey Jesus or not. Now Ephesians 1 4 says, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So, he chose us. Do we choose him back? Are we trying to be holy? Are we trying to obey Jesus? It's up to us. There's a choice there. Now, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God, God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctifi sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Now, from the beginning, chosen you till salvation. Okay, he chose us. Do we accept his choice? Do we choose him? Now, sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. So, this tells me, it should tell all of us, so we must be baptized in the Holy Spirit, which is truth. So, to be sanctified by the Spirit, we must be baptized by the Spirit first. And this is talking about the Holy Spirit. We're not born with the Holy Spirit. We're to be baptized in the Holy Spirit when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Now in Romans 8.29, For whom did he foreknow? He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. That Jesus might be the firstborn among many brethren. Or like his brother, because it's a son, right? Many are called by God to follow Jesus. He knows us ahead of time, yes, and he's called us. Do we obey? Many are called, but few choose to answer that call. And to obey the Lord God Almighty. It's all on us. Yes, he knew us before. Yes, he picked us. But he gave us free will always throughout our whole life. Even after we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we can change our mind and go with the devil. The person would have to be a total idiot to do such a thing. So, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace and glory, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So this plan was decided upon before the world began.
before before he made the earth and the heavens this was God's plan now this does not mean we are sealed of God yet we are not born and we got the seal of God on us not until one gets baptized in the Holy Spirit not until one accepts Jesus as the Lord and Savior, gets baptized in the Holy Spirit and the water, can we live by the plans God made for us. We have to decide to, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit never just jumps on you without your permission. God never forces himself on anybody. Now if you're saved, he'll come, in, come into you and let you know right, something right away, or the word of knowledge or something. He wants us to do all things freely. We are not robots. Now, Ephesians chapter 2. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should, should walk in them. Should walk in them. Should does not mean we have to. Okay? It's still a freedom of choice. Should is a condition. If we decide to do what he wants us to do, then we accept his choice and we make the choice to accept him. Now in John chapter 6 verse 37 And all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. Jesus is talking here. And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. So all the Father giveth me shall come to me. Shall, not must, not will, but shall come to me. Like it should come to me. But will we? That's another choice we have. And him that come unto me. Those that decide to answer the call of the Father to follow Jesus. Will cometh to Jesus. And Jesus is no wise in no way will cast us out if we love and obey our Father in Heaven. So now we jump to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through the sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, Grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. So, again, yes, Father God knew us way back before we were dreaming our mother's eyes. Through sanctification of the Spirit. What Spirit? The Holy Spirit, of whom we must be baptized in. Just like Jesus was, unto obedience. We have always been obedient. Have we always been obedient to God? Have we? I know I haven't. It was a long time. I'm still not as obedient as I should be. I try, though. We must stay in his word to learn how. So, once we're born again, and we get baptized in the water, and we get baptized by the Holy Spirit, only then have we decided to go the way God has planned for us. Only then will the Holy Spirit sanctify us and give us the seal of God. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake. Who are the elect? The elect are the saints who decided to answer the call to God and accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That is who the elect are. That they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. That we may also obtain the salvation. If we have to obtain it, we haven't got it yet. We haven't accepted it yet. 
again, a choice for all of us to make. It's not set in concrete until we are born again because of the plans God the Father made for us. Have we ever made plans about anything? And we choose to change those plans in any way? Maybe we were going to go to the east 20 miles and we decided to go to the west 10 miles. A different stop, a different destination. See, that's the way life is with Jesus. We either follow him or we follow our own will. Now, this is referring to Judah, Mark 14, chapter 14, verse 21. The Son of Man indeed goeth, as it is written of him. Who is the Son of Man? God. I mean, Jesus. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Who betrayed Jesus? The Son of Man? Judah. Good word for that man if he had never been born. Now, was Judah ever forgiven? We don't know. Only God knows. For, for he does what he wants. Judah felt real bad afterwards. So he may have asked the Father to forgive him. Because we all know that he was used by Satan in the first place, like many of us can be used by Satan if we allow it. Many of us are deceived by Satan and don't even know it. God forbid that any of my brothers and sisters are. It can happen if we don't if we don't stay in the Word of God. His word gives us the power of Jesus in us. So God only knows if he, if he was forgiven or not. God can forgive us of almost any sin if we stop that sin. There is one sin against the Holy Spirit, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, where we cannot be forgiven. But in order for him to give, forgive us of our sins, we must repent and change and stop the sinning at least make attempts to and let Jesus help us stop because he will. Without repentance the wages of sin is death. And God said that, not me. So now we go to Romans 6.23 So if predestined... For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. So when we repent and ask Jesus into our lives, we accept the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We need to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So, let's say I get a gift for you for your birthday. You don't accept it or open it. Same thing. Perhaps you took it back. I don't know. We need to accept this gift in our hearts and our minds. Not just say it, but really feel it in our hearts and minds. And believe it in our hearts and minds. Now, John chapter 3, The same came to Jesus by night. and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou dost, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, and when Jesus says verily, he is serious. I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Where is that predestination now? It is our choice again to decide. Jesus, oh, yeah. So, it's always up to us. Jesus answered, very, very, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. This is John chapter 3, verse 5. You know, of course, Jesus loves us, and Jesus is God. He has done all he can for us. 
except he can't accept the gift for us. It is our choice, brothers and sisters. All up to us. What will we decide with our own minds and hearts? If we're not robots who can be told what to do, or what to think, or what to believe, we must do so willingly. God the Father never forces himself on any of us. Never. Yeah, he might gently nudge us in the direction he wants us to go, but he will not force us to do what, what he wants us to do. We have to do it willingly. Kind of like he insisted on I start preaching and teaching. He was after me for a long time. For one reason or another, I didn't. Maybe it was selfishness. I was in all this political garbage, which we as Christians need to be into. But we also need to include God in all that we do. And show our lights and flavor it with the salt of us Christians. I wasn't really doing much good, so I finally decided about a year ago to do what he wants me to do. And now that I'm doing it, I enjoy it, I love it. There are bad days because, you know, you get attacked, but I know the Lord is there for me and I've been okay. Uh, my only regret is that I didn't accept his mission or start doing his will a lot sooner. I live and learn by God. He forgives me and you of our sins if and when we ever ask him to. Now, Jesus is Lord of Lords, King of Kings, and he loves you. I love you. Have a great day in Jesus. Amen and amen.